Module three, workflows. Now remember in JIRA that an issue represents a unit of work and that unit of work will transition through various statuses. And those statuses by default might be a to-do, an in-progress, and then a done status. And the power of JIRA comes from that ability to configure this workflow. So when you view a workflow for your project, you'll see that for this particular issue type, the task issue type, we have a to-do, an in-progress, and a done status. And our unit of work, our record in JIRA, can transition from the to-do state to in-progress to done by using the drop-down here to transition to the different status values. Now, when you set up your project, you are provided with a pre-configured workflow, but you can configure, reconfigure, modify this workflow from the project settings, and you will see under the issue types area, for the types of issues you have, different workflows that you can configure. So each issue type can have its own workflow. So my bug issue type here has a workflow to do in progress and done. And if I go back and look at other issue types, we could configure a different workflow for those. So my Epic might just have two statuses if I wanted to do and done. So I could remove the in progress status if I wanted to just for Epics. And that's an important concept to understand because for the different types of work you're undertaking, they may have different workflows, different status values that you want to configure in JIRA. But as well as configuring those status values, the other term you may find used when you're working with JIRA is the concept of the transition. And the transition is the move from one status to another. And you can add transitions so that you can force and restrict what statuses that an issue may transition from. So it may be that you don't want to be able to transition directly from to do to done, in which case you would force the transition from a to do to in progress. So I might add a transition from status to do to in progress. And I might call that transition starting starting work. And in this way, you can kind of force and control the transition and the process that people have to follow and configure it to map the business processes that you run within your team. And as you configure those status values, those transitions and that workflow for your project, those status values you can use in all of the search um, the board views, the timelines, as you start to sift and search for different issues. So when I'm searching for issues, for example, I can see the statuses that I've configured down here, and I may only be interested in looking for issues that are in a to-do state. And likewise, when I'm looking on a board view, I can transition the status values here by dragging and dropping my issue or the card for that issue from one column to another. So this is another way to change the status of a of a record in JIRA so that when I view this, you'll now see that that status has changed to in progress. And I can complete that particular piece of work by dragging it to the done column. And here, now when I view this issue, we'll see that the issue is now in a done state because we transitioned from in progress to done and we've marked this piece of work effectively as completed. So the thing to take away from this in terms of workflow is that different issue types can have different workflows, they can have different fields, and they can have different accesses and privilege models for the different issue types. And the idea is, is that you build out that workflow with the statuses and the transitions to map your business processes so that when you come to look for the status on your project, JIRA gives you that visibility of the progress on all of the tasks within your project. So in the next video, we're going to have a look at a final core concept, which is components and versions within JIRA. And this is just another way to group, organize, filter and search for issues within JIRA.